Just clear, just clear. Move, 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 move. move. Come on, Tabe. Uh, today, since morning, we've been having a series of meetings with all stakeholders as it affects security in our dear country, Nigeria. We're all aware that we have security challenges almost all over the country, but we saw the need to continue to deliberate, to collaborate, to cooperate together in order to address these challenges. Efforts have been made to make sure that we position them in such a way that troops will be able to respond in case there are uh, any attacks or threats uh, to the lives of the uh, pupils in this, in this school. So it's an ongoing operation. And um, again, to jump into what we mentioned about the visit to Sokoto, ideally we have overviewed the entire operation and realized that we need to harmonize our operations together. Uh, if you notice, we have Operation Hatter in Daiji and Operation White Stroke both within the uh, uh, Northwest region. Uh, we have seen the need for us to harmonize those operations into one operation like we did in the North, is where we have Operation Hat in K. The same thing is being done now for the Northwest operation. We have one unified operation. Uh, it's going to be called Operation Fansan Yama. Fansan Yama, for those of us that know, it's securing the, uh, the West. Now the intention is to ensure that we synergize all our efforts in addressing the security challenges in the, in the, in the Northwest. It's been uh, their tradition for the, terror, the bandits to be able to flow between the, uh, the states within them. So now what we're doing is that since we're harmonizing the whole operation, they will come under one commander. And then the commander will be able to utilize all the equipment and troops together to ensure that we address this uh, critically. And I think that's the best solution we have for it. And I can assure you, all the assets that is required to do that will be done. Uh, the intention of the bandits is to just show that they are present. It is acts of criminality. And that's why we're appealing to Nigerians not to provide any support. If you remember the last time we had this issue where our APC was, uh, the MRAB was bogged down and the terrorists came. It was some people that called them and told them that the troops were having issues with their vehicle and they should come around. And they came in mass. That was what exactly happened. And that's why we're appealing to individuals. If you think those guys are on your side, they are a bunch of deranged individuals that have no allegiance to anybody. Today you think you are with them, tomorrow they are coming after you. It's just like training monsters. When you train monsters, when they grow up, they definitely will be the next victim. So we appeal to Nigerians not to allow themselves to be cowed. And like it is also said, we also appeal that for us to maintain security, the armed forces and security agencies cannot be everywhere. We will try as much as possible to be there, but we're going to build the capacity of the locals to, to be able to uh, defend themselves for a while before the military will come in. That we have adopted in the Northeast with the civilian JTF, with the hybrid forces, and it has worked. We're also trying to do the same thing. We're working with the state government. We're not working in isolation. We know the relevance of the communities. We know the relevance of the uh, uh, state governments. So we're working as a team to ensure that we address uh, these issues together. And the issue of 2G, like I said, it's just a deranged individual that feels power, but I can bet you that it's just a matter of time. A matter of time, we're going to get this, and I can assure you, within the shortest possible time, we're going to address that issue on uh, paying. On the issue of payment, uh, that is what they live on, and it shows you the desperation they are in. One, even when they get the money, they don't have where to use it. Two, is that the money they are getting, they know it's blood money. And that is why we all must come together to work with members of the armed forces and security agencies to deny them the ability to move freely within our communities. Please do not give them any support. Do not give them information on the movement of troops because this is what is really happening. Most of the area where this thing is continuing is because we have informants within the communities. And like I've always reminded Nigerians, that asymmetric warfare is something that should not be allowed to come in because once it starts, it's a very difficult operation. You are dealing with non-state actors that are not wearing you. You don't know them, but they know you. And within the communities, if you don't have the support of the community, it makes it extremely very difficult. Uh, so we will continue to do the best we can. And I can assure you that we are going to get them uh, very, very well. 
You can see from the table here, we are working together with all security agencies. None is left behind. And the import is that we're going to now leverage on our strengths to, uh, to be able to go further, whatever it is. The armed forces will move further, and then the other ones will follow. Wherever it is that we are, we're able to liberate, the uh, other security agencies will follow up our garrison. Our intention is to make sure that life returns to normalcy in Nigeria. It's a work for all of us together, including members of the press. Please, we're not saying you should not do your reporting, but please report in such a way to add courage, to add the morale, increase the morale of our men. Because when they are being insulted, when they are being accused of not doing it, demoralizes them. And when they are demoralized, they cannot give you the best. But again, we appreciate all you have been doing and we'll continue to work together. Thank you. We have some challenges in the Kuama community. Some people have been asking, what has happened about Okuoma? What has happened about the bandits? I want to assure you that uh, the killing of 17 personnel of the armed forces will not go unpunished. Those responsible, we are hunting them, we are looking for them. It will take time, no doubt, but the military will surely bring them to justice, as directed by Mr. President. So I want to assure Nigerians that it's not gone. You remember how long it took to get Saddam, uh, to get uh, Bin Laden, it takes a lot of effort, but justice will surely prevail. So we are working on that. Apart from working on that, we are also working towards making sure that our troops are properly protected. We want to ensure that troops are always configured in such a way that no matter the situation, that force protection element, that ability of the troops to defend themselves while carrying out activities are respected. So we are working on that. And also our rule of engagement and posture is also being improved. You know, the danger of asymmetric threat is that uh, calibrating how you operate to ensure that the majority of law-abiding citizens are not unnecessarily undermined and also being able to apply the right amount of force against the adversary. That is the biggest challenge in asymmetric warfare. How do you balance that a person who is innocent have the ability to his, live his life, go about his normal activities, and also be able, within the same breath, to identify the adversary and give him a mortal blow. So we are working on these issues. On the whole, I want to assure Nigerians that the armed forces remain capable, ready, willing to carry out its constitutional duties of protecting Nigerians, and that will continue to do. Thank you very much, sir.